Good day, guys. Today we're going to be taking a look at the shady USB Ethernet adapters that I picked up from AliExpress for around $3 Australian each delivered. These were both from different listings and different sellers, and although they are visually different, they seem to be using pretty much the same hardware. We'll move over to our Windows 10 PC, and I'll show you why I refer to them as shady. We're over on our Windows 10 PC now, and on the left hand side you can see in Device Manager there is no optical drive connected since this is a Chromebook. I'll plug in the USB Ethernet adapter and we'll see what happens. We can hear it enumerate. So it does briefly show up as an unknown device, LAN 100M, and then it disconnects itself and reconnects as a optical drive. That in itself is fine. The reason why I call it shady is if you double click on the drive that shows up, it does try and run the installer. You can see here, setup.exe, but instead we'll right click on it and go open. And you can see there is no driver inside. It is just an exe file. We'll try and open it with 7-zip just to see what's inside. And it does have the driver files inside, which is a good sign. I think we'll try upload the setup.exe to VirusTotal and just see if anything's detected. So we're on virustotal.com. We'll just go choose file and we'll upload the setup.exe on the drive that showed up. So luckily it didn't detect anything malicious inside, but it is always a good rule of thumb to never run any exe files that come with things from AliExpress without checking them for viruses first. We'll close off virus total and we'll try and run the setup.exe. So here it is here. You can see on the left hand side, generic USB CD DVD drive. So we'll run setup, click yes. And I didn't press anything. It was automatic. The CD drive did uh, disconnect. And if we go to network adapters, there it is there, NX USB 2.0 fast ethernet adapter. So it's not a traditional installer. It does just pop up briefly and disappear. I think we'll try a speed test, but unfortunately, since this Chromebook doesn't have a built-in ethernet port, we'll first do a speed test on the built-in Wi-Fi just to get a baseline. And then we'll try again using our USB 2 ethernet adapter. So the first test, we are just using Google Chrome's built-in speed test. So this first test is gonna be on Wi-Fi. All right, we'll use that as the baseline and I'll disconnect the Wi-Fi. So Wi-Fi is disabled. I'll connect the ethernet cable to the adapter. You can see it's identifying. It does seem to be going between unidentified network and off. So that's interesting. We also don't have any link lights. There we go. It did take a while, but it uh, eventually connected. We'll run the same speed test again and see what we get. So we're at about 42 and 12. And on ethernet, we got 70 and around six. That is quite interesting. I was not expecting this cheap USB 2.0 ethernet adapter to get these kind of speeds. The old ethernet adapters I had from about 10 years ago, they were uh, quite slow. Maybe eight or nine megasecond download was considered pretty good. We did get significantly worse upload though. We'll do another test just to make sure it wasn't a fluke. And we seem to get even better results this time. It's worth noting with the initial Wi-Fi test, I did do three separate speed tests and all three were pretty much identical. I think we'll do one more speed test on ethernet just to make it a nice three. And we got a different result once again. The download speed using this ethernet adapter was still faster than the built-in wireless on this Chromebook in all three tests. I think next we'll try it on our Chrome OS Chromebook since we can't run the built-in exe installer and see if it works out of the box. We're on our Chromebook now, running Chrome OS version 134, and I've turned the Wi-Fi off. We'll plug in the USB Ethernet adapter. So far, nothing's happened. Oh, there we go. Ethernet connected. That is very cool. Does work out the box. We'll try run a speed test. So pretty good download speeds, but pretty much the same as we saw on our Windows device. So it works out the box on Chrome OS. I think next we'll try Linux Mint. So we've booted into live Linux Mint and we'll open up our network interface. So you can see the Wi-Fi is disconnected. We'll plug in our USB ethernet and see if it uh, works. And straight away it was detected. We'll open up the web browser and try a speed test once more. So again, using Google Chrome's built-in speed test, go run speed test. And pretty similar results to both Chrome OS and Windows. The upload is a little bit slow, but it is within tolerance. I think we'll try it on one more device, our legit R36S. So we're on our R36S now, running ArcOS. We'll go options, and we'll go down to network info. We won't open it just yet. I've just popped a USB-C to USB-A adapter on our USB Ethernet adapter. We'll plug it into the OTG port, and we'll open up network info and see if it works. And it does. 
I am very impressed with these cheap USB Ethernet adapters. I think it might be worth trying on the R36S clones as well, actually. So we're over on our R36S clone. This is running the built-in stock OS and it doesn't work here, no surprises. I have also tried the custom build of Arc OS for these clones, but again, it just doesn't work. It does not seem to use a supported chipset. Overall, I am super impressed with both of these cheap USB Ethernet adapters. They work out of the box on Linux, Chrome OS, and even the R36S, which is running Ubuntu under the hood anyway. When I first connected it to my Windows PC, it did come across as quite shady, but after doing some tests, as you saw, we uploaded it to VirusTotal, installed a driver, there doesn't seem to be anything nefarious about it. Also, it is detected as a USB Ethernet device first, and it looks like if it can't find a driver, it instead remounts as an optical drive. This is probably to stop refunds for people that plug it into their computer and can't get it working. I would have still preferred something that used a real tech chip, but for the price I paid, I'm not too upset. Again, if you do buy one of these for your Windows computer, I would definitely recommend uploading the installer to VirusTotal just to make sure everything's safe. I think that'll do it for today. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down below. Otherwise, thanks for watching.